So does the thought create the molecule or the molecule create the thought? Or are they simultaneous expressions of a deeper transcendent reality that we are inseparable? Ask him. Can, can, I, can I just jump in here? Uh, okay, what you, I think we should wander off the, the, uh, the specifics of oxytocin. But you, you, he's just described an experiment where you can actually answer that question. If I give you a shot of oxytocin and it changes your level of trust, then, the, then the, it's not just mere correlation. I mean, we've run that. We've run it both ways. And but so that's I what can he just increase trust, and it can generate yeah, oxytocin yes, okay. too. But, but if trust is just the brain in one state, then you have the brain influencing its future states. You haven't gotten out of the brain and gotten an, an, an ectoplasm. Trust or a, or is a, the subjective experience soul. of consciousness. Oxytocin is the objective experience yes, okay, of consciousness. Yes, okay, but what you seem to be expressing is a deeper skepticism about whether the brain is even involved. No, the brain uh, is involved. No, your consciousness likes brains to express itself. Okay, but do you believe, for instance, that... I mean, do you believe that, that, that does, do we have souls or some, that our mind is somehow independent of the brain that will lift off the brain at death and go elsewhere? Is that I believe the there's a transcendent proposal? core consciousness that is comprised of meanings, context, relationships, archetypal ideas that recycles itself, just like everything else recycles okay. so itself. So it's, it's in no sense a product of the brain. It's, uh, it's no sense a product of the brain, and our whole endeavor in spiritual discipline is to actually go beyond that personal consciousness, that ego consciousness, so we can identify with that transcendent reality, which is the source of space, time, energy, and everything else that exists. Okay, well, let me just say no, a few things. No, but I think the question is, are we, uh, are we encapsulated bags of skin dragging around a dreary little ego? No, no, or, that, that, are that we is, that organism really environment the symbiotic you, you with can fields, say no to fields that. and consciousness of life? Sad, Deepak, let me just say, you put a lot on the table. You actually, so Deepak just said some very, uh, seems a strange word to use, but some concrete things that, that, that science can criticize. Okay, the, the, you just said that consciousness and mind are... I didn't say consciousness and mind. I no, said no. mind is a product of consciousness. Okay, but what okay? this, this, this subjectivity is independent of the objectivity of the brain. There is a subjectivity which is independent of objects. But there's a subjectivity yes. okay. which is subjectivity of itself. When you're looking at the brain for consciousness, you're not looking at consciousness. You're looking at synaptic firings. In fact, yes. it is your yes, consciousness yes. that is looking okay. at those synaptic okay. firings. All right. Let's just, Where? Let's, just Where? Keep, let's just keep that in view. All right. Now, you've said that there are two things that, that an incomplete science of consciousness and the mind should want to say about that. One is that, that having an experience of undivided consciousness is, does not tell you what consciousness really is or what its relationship to the brain really is. There's nothing about introspection that leads you to sense that your subjectivity is at all dependent or even related to voltage changes and chemical interactions going on inside your head. Okay, you can, you can feel, you can drop acid, you can meditate for a year, you can do whatever you want to perturb your nervous system. You can, you can feel yourself to be one with the universe, and at no point in that transformation do you get a glimpse that there's a hundred trillion neurons in your head uh, or synapses in your head that, that are doing anything. It's called okay. binding. No, it's not. It's called. It's called absolute subjective ignorance of the of, of what's actually going on outside to consciousness. You're okay. so, so. But you're so deep. You're so dismissive, not, no, no. dismissive of subjective experience. I'm not. I'm not, which not has remotely given rise dismissive to of poetry, it. to music, to art. So dismissive deep, of subjectivity. I'm saying that the whole Deepak, universe not, is imbued with subjectivity. There's nothing more important than subjectivity. It's all Thank we you. could possibly care about. The, 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 the fabric of our experience, of co our, the changes in our conscious experience are all we care about. Um, and they, they have some relation to the physical universe. Absolutely. Okay, now, the question is... They give is, rise to the physical universe. Well, okay, that is a statement of metaphysics that is totally unjustified and cannot possibly be That's justified... That's why it's a statement based, of metaphysics, not of physics. On, no, no. Metaphysical statements also have to be justified, as it turns out. <laughs> Metaphysic uh, statements come from subjective experiences. All right, you're starting to lose me a little bit. <laughs> I've let it go. 
I've let it go, but let's rein it back in.